So we're going to go back to WordPress.com, log in, and we will continue to look at our menu items. So remember when you log into WordPress here, it takes you to the reader screen, which is not that useful for us at this point. I'm logged into WordPress and there's the reader. And then you want to switch over to My Sites. So we'll go over to My Sites. And remember I said I recommend right away to switch over to the WP Admin screen. That's the dashboard. That's the more powerful one. All of the features are there. I think a little easier to get to. Um, and it's the one that I'm usually going to be talking about. So we'll go to WP Admin. And it's been a long time, a whole week. I don't remember what my site looks like. So I'm going to go look at it on View Site. Remember, you can hover over the name of your site up there and then View Site. I just want to get acclimated again so we can decide what to do. Uh, previously, we were we had created a post. There it is there, my first day of CIS 255. That was a while ago. We created a menu items. There it is in the menu. We did contact me and a link over to Twitter, I think. So those are the two things that are there. So let me back up for to this to this concept I mentioned previously, but now I'll mention it again where it'll make more sense. So if you look at this example of uh, one of my sites, this is my blog site, uh, vmcampus.com slash blog. This is a WordPress site, and it's all set up via WordPress. And this is an example of a purely blog type of site. Uh, notice how the latest blog post pushes down the older blog posts. That's exactly what we've got right now on our sites. We create, we, if we create a new blog post, it'll push the older ones down. So that's the default WordPress behavior. That's what I've got here on my personal blog. Uh, for a client that I worked for, I did uh, another kind of WordPress site where it doesn't um, utilize a blog. Uh, it's also a WordPress site, but it's a static site in that the front page has this information that's really not going to change. They didn't uh, go for the package of blogging. Uh, they, uh, they just have a basic static home page. The menu changes. We changed it recently. And there's this slideshow, but that's not the same as a blog. But this is the other kind of site that you can create in WordPress, which is a static site. It doesn't change um, on the regular basis that a blog changes. So right, I have my a question about that. Yeah. So from an SEO point of view, which one's better? The third one I'm about to talk about. Oh, okay. So this first one is purely a blog. This one is purely static. And in the middle, there is a version that mixes both of those. And I believe that is a little better for your SEO to get found, and I'll explain why. But here's an example of that kind of site where it does both of these. I'll put it here in the middle. This is that other client of mine. Uh, they've got a WordPress site as well. And it's got static content as well as blog content. And that's, that's the big thing. It does both. It's got a section for the blog. The home page has a slideshow, which you know you can we can change it here and there. We've got these static elements that uh, don't change as much, perhaps, and then a blog. So that's been updated recently. Uh, a couple of blog posts have come out in the past uh, month or two, and then it's got its own section for blog. So this is the kind of site that I recommend to clients or or to all of you that well, what kind of site should I make? I recommend this kind of site that mixes both of the elements that WordPress is good at, blogging and a static site. And I'll show you how to create this kind of site shortly. But this one is better, and we'll get into the details of it later. It's better for SEO 
because let's say that you and your competitor both created a website about you know the similar uh, product or or service or whatever but you have continued to update it every so often let's say once a month or once a week or some some often you know updated some often amount of time whatever it is when someone searches for whatever both of you do you have a more chance of being found because Google and Bing and Yahoo and the search engines see that your site is newer has newer content than your competitor so your site could appear higher than the other site because you've updated it and via blogging that's one of the best ways to do these updates because I'm not gonna update the menu every every month I'm not gonna make up a new thing for the menu uh, I'm not going to um, you know if I'm if I'm selling my paintings or my services uh, I'm not be I'm not updating those things as much as a blog so of course we'll talk about well how do you blog what can I blog about etc and all of this all of this stuff that's what this whole class is all of these pieces of this puzzle little by little but I show you these three sites because what we're gonna do is right now we're gonna do this we're going to set this up so that if you want your site to be only a blog you can do that which is the default or you can set it up that it's only static and you can do that and we'll see or we're gonna set it up so that it's a combination of the two I'm gonna do that right now let's go back to WordPress Back to your dashboard here. This needs a little bit of setup because the default, like I said, for WordPress is that it's going to show your latest blog post right away. And if in order for it to show you something more like this, we need to create a home page, a home screen, and a screen to store our blog. Notice that's what I've got here, a page that shows all the blog posts. So we need to create two new pages, a home page and a blog page, and then link it that. So here's how we do this. We'll go back to the dashboard here. Remember, we've got posts and we've got pages. I forget. What's the difference between a post and a page again? Anyone remember? Page is static. Yeah, it doesn't really change that often, like a home page, an about page, etc. And a post is the one that changes blog posts. We're going to need a new page. Actually, let me double check something about me. Contact me. Okay. We're going to need a new page. So hover over pages and then click add new. So add new. At the top here, the title of the page, we'll just call it for the moment home. We can always edit it, of course, but we'll call it home. And we'll take we'll write a very simple welcome message here. Um, in the text area, we'll just say welcome to what's that? The apocalypse. The apocalypse. It's not time for that yet. Welcome to my site. We can change it, of course, but uh, we'll just write something basic like this. This is our home page. We'll, we can put any content we want, of course. We'll write something very basic, and we'll publish it. So select Publish on the right side. Obviously, it's a lot more work to do something like I, like I have with this client. This has a slideshow. We'll talk about adding cool slideshows. This has these... Uh, uh, these, uh, these are known as calls to action. Each one of them is a call to action, so the plural is calls to action. Calls to actions, maybe. But uh, we can do that later, more complicated. And then, of course, well, I want the blog to also show up on the home page. We'll do that later. But we're setting up the foundation. So publish your home page. And we need to create another page. Uh, so on the left side, uh, here, click Add New again, and now we're going to create a blog page. So after you publish, you can then click Add New. You'll see at the top it says Page Published. So Add New. And then we will call the 
we will call the page here uh, blog. We'll call it blog. And on this, we actually do not need to write anything because what will happen is this is just a placeholder. Every new blog post will automatically go into this page, so we don't really need anything in, in the content here of the blog. It's going to get replaced by our blog posts. So publish that. And um, that's, in general, step one. Create the placeholder pages. Then um, step two is we're going to set up our blog, our site, so that it uses these pages. So now let's go over to, uh, make sure you've published, go over to settings, reading, the reading screen. So reading. And here's where we'll see that the default, the very first option here, front page displays. They should reword that. It should say something more like, what would you like your front page to display? That's what that is trying to say. Front page displays. The, the tense of that is weird. That's what it's asking. What would you like your front page to display? And in the default it says, your latest posts. So that makes sense. The default is that it's going to show my latest blog post. But instead, I want a static page. And notice that is an active link. So if you, if you follow that link, it just goes to the WordPress um, uh, list of all of your pages. You don't have to click it, but that's what, uh, that's what this is. That's what I want. And this wasn't going to work until we had those placeholder pages, right? So on this screen, Turn that on for a static page. And then on the front page right here, we're going to select home. And then on the post page, blog. What do we display on the front page? The home page we just created. What do we dis where do we display our posts? On the blog page we created. That's right. So did everyone find that here? Once you make that change, of course, remember to save. Go to the bottom and click that Save button. to then um, remember to click save at the bottom. Go to the bottom of the screen and click save. Save changes. Save changes, yes. And most likely we also have to update our menu. Remember we have this menu that previously in my case was showing only uh, home and contact me. There's no mention of a blog because we never edited the menu. 
So WordPress is very literal in that it does what you tell it when it doesn't do what you don't tell it. So we need to edit our menu. Where, where do we find our menus again? We talked about it last time. Anyone remember? Where do you think our menus appear? I think I heard someone say appearance section and then menus. <coughs> so let's go over to the appearance section and then menus. Exactly, it's very literal. It, it doesn't know we want that page yet because it didn't exist when we created the menu. So notice right here on my side, uh, here it says, um, I'm currently editing the main menu, and it has a home, a contact me, and the Twitter link, but it does not have the blog link. So in order to add it, on the left side, there it is. The most recent page that I've worked on or created is the blog page. So you want to select it. Add to menu. There is, uh, in a tr in a sense, there is a home page that we kind of see, but in a technical sense, there is not. There is a blog, you know, there is a blog screen, and we have to explicitly say this is the home screen and this is the home. Uh, this is the blog screen. So I'm going to add to menu, and then you can rearrange this however you want. Remember, you just drag it and, and so forth. Let's say I want the blog link after home, so just drag it up there. And remember, be careful that if you drag it and it becomes indented, it becomes a sub-menu item. You might not want that. I'm going to leave it like this. My menu is going to have home, blog, contact, and then a sub-item, Twitter. One way to possibly help you do this in the future, maybe you're going to add more pages, like a products page or some other pages, like a portfolio page, and, and you're going to maybe forget to add it to the menu. Well, you've got this option right here below the menu. Automatically add new top-level pages to this menu. So that might help you. When you create a new page, it'll automatically get added to the menu, so at least you don't forget about it. The, the problem with it is that it just is just going to put it the the last one that you create will be added as the last one to the menu and you might want a different order well you can just edit the menu usually for me I don't turn that one on because I want the control of controlling it but if you turn that on it might help you in any event remember to save the menu I have a question. yes what does it refer with uh, social media? This particular theme has two places where we can put menus, and one place is called the primary menu area, and the other place is called the social links area. So depending on the theme, you might have a sidebar menu, footer menu, top menu. So this particular one has those two places, those two possible places for a, for a menu. I'm going to save that and then visit the site. Remember, hover over the name of your site, visit site, or view site. And then at the top, and then now what I see, look, at the at the home page, I see the home. You know, on the home screen, I see the home page. And then in the uh, menu over here, I see the blog. And all the blogs have been moved over to the blog screen. Did that work for everyone? Any need, anyone need a little help?
Yeah, uh, at some point. Uh, so this one came out in, in last week. And we're making changes and we didn't even ready to save them. But um, that's okay. What we'll do is we'll delete them. So these two that say draft just come in and watch them. And then the other ones <laughs> All right, so what we've got here then now is this type of hybrid page where uh, it, it can have a static home page as well as uh, a blog section. And when we get to our section, uh, when we get to our part in the class about blogging, I'll talk more about what makes a good blog, some advice, and all of that. But um, I wanted. Yes. Okay. All right, so that was a good question, actually. Um, so if you see this result, you might have, you might have expected to see, just like my client's site over here, that the blog is right on the home page. Um, that requires some more work, but what we've got is that we've got the capability that the blog is its own separate section instead of taking over the home page to make it look like this client's site. That's going to need a little bit more work, and, and we'll get to that a little later. But at least we've set up our foundation like this. So uh, let's address a couple of issues here. Did you notice that when you're on your home page, you know, you've got your text, and then you've got these share buttons. That's cool. But then you've got a section for comments. Do you ever see comments really on the home page? No. You might see comments on a blog post. You know, if someone reads your blog and they love it, they'll comment on that, but not really on the home page. So WordPress has built in the ability for people to write comments anywhere on your site. And sometimes you don't want that. I don't want comments on my about page or my home page. So let's talk about turning that off. Um, there's two ways to do it. One is the one is the precise way and one is the, the the blunt way. The blunt way is that we turn off comments for the whole site, which you might not want because that'll turn off comments also on your blog. And I do want comments on the blog. The precise way is what I'm going to show you first because uh, most likely that's what you want. I want to turn off comments on the home page and maybe some other ones. So let's go back over to the pages screen click on pages when you hover over any of your pages you get the menu you get this little menu under each page right hover over home and select quick edit edit gives you the full screen to edit your item your page but quick edit gives us some simple things to to change such as allow comments yes or no no, I don't want comments on the home page. So just turn it off. And remember to update. Yeah. What's the difference between the title and the slug? 
In this case, the only difference that we're kind of seeing is the capitalization. But what's going on with this, guys, a little, little quieter, please, if you're going to talk to each other. Um, the difference is that the slug is like the, the web-friendly name, like the URL, the address. Because notice if you, look, if you do a quick edit on the About Me, the title is capital letters and it looks nice, human readable. And the slug is all lowercase with a dash because there's no spaces and file names and so forth. So the slug automatically usually writes itself based on what you wrote in the title. If you need to change it, like to change your addresses of your files and stuff, you can edit the slug. So here, when we were editing the home page, did you turn off allow comments? And now you don't have comments on your home page. Maybe you don't want comments on the contact page. Or what other pages do we have? Contact and about. So if you quick edit about me, I don't want comments there either. Turn that off. We have to press update, right? Yeah, it's not going to remember your change unless you update it. On contact me, I don't need comments there. That's what people are doing there. They're sending a con they're, they're, they're filling out the contact form to contact me so they don't need to leave a message on the page. That's weird. So I'm going to update that. And then the home page also. Leave comments on the blog because we want comments on the blog. Now if I go back to visit site on the home page, it still has these cool, you know, sharing um, sharing features which we do want, which is which is good SEO. I do want people to be able to share my stuff on Twitter and Facebook and so forth. But it removed the comments, which didn't really make sense or didn't really work for my home page. If I go back to my blog, I'm gonna go to the blog. I'm gonna open up this blog post here, my first day. There's an area for comments on the blog post. All right, did that work for everyone? Anyone need some help? Yeah. Yeah, when I do Well, you would need to uh, use the one that has a blog post that's just easy to read. Oh, and okay. And then when a person reads it and sees the blog post, they can read it. Okay, so let's look at a couple of other foundational things here, and then we'll take a quick break. Um, we're seeing that we can um, control the basic foundation of the site. It needed some setup, right? Remember, I'm recording all these lectures, so you can always go back and review. But we needed those steps about creating the pages, adding them to the menu, and then now we have this hybrid type of home page. And then this little trick about turning on or off comments. Um, I had also said about, well, that, that was precise, that was uh, surgical. I went to each of those pages and edited comments on or off. If I want to turn comments on or off for everything at once, let me show you that. We, we need to do that back at the settings menu. Um, and this time, reading, I'm sorry, discussion. Go to settings and then discussion. Settings menu, discussion, and you've got a section up over here under default article settings, the third item, allow people to post comments on new articles. It's on. So every time you make a new article, which is their term for either a new page or a new post, it'll automatically have comments. If you turn that off, any new page that you create and post will not have comments. So for me, that's, for me, a lot of times I've shot myself in the foot. 
because I turned that off. I didn't want any comments on the home page and the contact page and the about. And then I started to write blog posts, and I thought, why aren't I getting any activity? They don't have comments on. I turned them all off there. So notice it also says these settings may be overridden for individual articles. So you can turn them on or off as necessary on individual posts or pages. But if you know what you're doing, you can change it there. I'm going to say let's leave it on. That way I don't accidentally not let people comment on my blog posts. I'll have to take the step to turn off comments on the about page and so forth, but I can live with that. And now re remind me here, did we look at any other other items in this discussion settings screen previously? Anyone remember? The spam words. The spam words. Okay, yeah, we did look at this screen then. Okay. Yeah, so refer back to that video. But the big thing was just uh, allow people to post comments or not globally. And here's the last thing um, under settings also. Let's go back to reading. We'll look at a few of these, at a few of these settings, and then we'll, um, then we'll take a break. Um, so settings, reading. This is where we changed the kind of front page to display. Uh, notice here, blog pages show at most. Again, the grammar of this, I would call it something more like, how many blog posts at a time to show. This is saying show 10 posts per page. So if I wrote 11 blog posts, it'll show me 10, and then it'll say at the bottom, next page, and then the 11th one. So that's cool. Automatically, it'll make page 1, page 2, page 3. But I would recommend 10 posts is too many uh, for someone to, to look at when they visit my site. Um, you know, they go over to my blog section and then it goes on and on and on and on. Even if we just have this read more, this continue reading option, just to see a long screen of possible posts uh, is, is not very user friendly. Uh, so I recommend here, cut this down a little bit more, maybe five, or what I personally like is three. Show three posts to people and if they like to see more, then they can click next they like those or want to go back further, they click next and they see three more. It keeps people on your site a little bit longer because they're exploring and they're seeing something new. If they see a whole wall of ten things, it might just go over their heads and then they don't pay attention. The minimum is one. The maximum is a big number. Don't worry about syndication feeds just yet. This is under the settings screen reading. Wait, are they talking about the home page or the blog page? The blog page. Oh. The home page is really only going to have one thing, that home page that we created. All right, so a person can subscribe to your website um, so that when you post a new blog post, they will get an email that says a new blog from Victor's Designs is available. And the default here is saying it's going to show the whole blog post in the person's email. I don't want that, actually. I don't want the whole blog post in the person's inbox because they might not even read it. They have other things to, to deal with, and when you're checking your email, maybe you just want to check your email and be done with it but it's better to put this onto summary because then on the email it'll say click here to read more and it'll take them back to your home page for you to capture their attention there so change that over to summary Site visibility, notice here we've got these options. Allow the search engines to find my site, that's on. Discourage search engines from finding my site. And I would like my site to be private. So you have to decide which of these you want. But in my opinion, most likely you'll want the, the first one. Allow the search engines to find my site. That's the whole point of making a website, usually. 
you're trying to sell a product or get a job or put your portfolio or your paintings out there and if people can't find you on search you know you you're you're almost invisible online but sometimes you want to you might want to put it on discourage meaning don't let the search engines find me because maybe I'm updating my site I'm doing a big extensive change and I don't want to be found yet so I can do that or to lock it down even more like to have only certain people read my site you can make it private but I'll leave it on allow search engines so when we get to the point of social media later on in the course um, the point of social media is that we're trying to generate traffic back to our website at our website is where we're going to have people do something we might have followers on Twitter we might have followers on Facebook etc we might have a lot of activity on Instagram but you cannot usually complete your goal on those networks and by the goal I mean well what's the point of you having a website let's say for me my point is that I want to get hired to make more websites for people or I've got my bakery and my and my goal is I want people to buy my cakes I'm not gonna be able to sell my cake directly on Facebook there's no mechanism for that Facebook doesn't let you sell products on Facebook you can't sell your product on Instagram directly you can't sell your product on Twitter directly but you can sell your product on your website so we're gonna be using social media when we get to it to generate traffic back to our website to sell a product to reach that goal so when people come to our site and they see we've got good content like you know they come to this site here they see this who looks really good huh, what's this blog about let me read that celebrities have been here let me read that hmm, maybe they're really good because they've been on travel channel yeah let me order right now so we're trying to do as many things to entice people to complete your goal the goal here is buy some tacos the goal over here is you know book a table come to the restaurant the goal over here is just you know pay attention to me read my blog so you're trying to get people to accomplish a goal um, to that end look at this related posts when a person reads one of your blog posts here it's set up that at the bottom it'll say why don't you also read this one and this one and that one you probably find you do that a lot right you you follow a link from somewhere and you like that article and then at the bottom there's another spot for more articles and you read that article and the next one and you spend more time on the site so this is on by default which is good show related content after posts so I would recommend to leave that one on um, just a little section that says show related header so that it uh, it's not loading up on my site for some reason but we'll look over here it's supposed to show you at the end of your there we go at the end of the blog post someone reads this and at the bottom related why don't you read part one of that article or why don't you read this one or that one so that's on but notice how this one looks cool with a picture and all of that to get that turn on this option here use a large and visually striking layout and you'll see something like that that's much better than text links because for me just plain old text links sort of feel spammy they're like uh, I kind of ignore them there's something there I never pay attention to it but if I see a cool picture if your blog post has a cool picture it might catch people's attention and they'll keep reading and then perhaps ultimately complete your goal which is to buy your product subscribe to your blog um, look at your paintings hire you whatever your goal is of your website this next option to infinity and beyond is related to where we've got blog page shows at most I told it here show three posts at a time and a traditional kind of blog is like the one I've got over here where you look at the home page and you you see this article here and then you see that one you see that one and then it says older post so I go to the older one and then I see a few more I see a few more and then older that's the traditional method 
the new hot method is more like Tumblr. Any of you browse Tumblr once in a while? Tumblr has something called infinite scroll, which is that you see some stuff, and then you scroll down, and you see some more stuff, you see some more stuff, and you're liking this, and you see some more, you keep going, and there's never a next page, previous page, you just keep going. You just keep seeing new stuff and keep going on. That's the infinite scroll. And that's the option that is right here. Scroll infinitely. So you have to decide which of these two you like, which style you like better. Do you like the traditional style where you are actually got, you know, next page, previous page? Or do you like the style where someone just scrolls and scrolls and scrolls? So it's just kind of up to you. You could watch that all day. No, I made these. This is my Tumblr. This is my Tumblog. And uh, I should update it. I haven't updated it in a while. But yeah, just a bunch of animated GIFs. So why does it mean show setting code? What happens is, this happens in the background uh, because uh, I, I forgot to mention it, but let me load it up again. Um, it's it kind of happens quickly, but um, you know how this scroll is right here. Um, once you get to the to the seventh one, it automatically loads seven more, so that you never you never have to manually go to the next page. So it's just how many do you want to automatically load so that people don't run out of content. And if you have a higher number, like seven or more, well, it's more stuff that gets downloaded, so it might slow down the connection. Um, but it won't load all 100 of your posts at once. We barely have two posts, so it doesn't really do anything for us, but if we had 12 posts, 10 posts, 7 posts, then that would, that would work a little bit more. But that's what that does. How many do you want to show? And do you want to show them infinitely or with new pages? Uh, if people add comments to your posts, you can have it show you on the corner how many comments it has. Uh, you can turn that on or off. And these other ones, don't worry about them just yet. But as I said, people can subscribe to your blog. What's the message that people will get? It'll say, howdy, you recently signed up to follow this blog, blah, blah, blah. If you wanted it to say your own kind of message, you can change that. Don't worry about it yet. But remember to save at the bottom because we did make a couple of changes here. If, if people wrote a comment in your blog that you don't like, mm -hmm. that you think that is not going to be good for, mm -hmm. uh, for your website, mm -hmm. can you take out that? Or? We can. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I'll show you that. But yeah, we have full control of our blog, where we can, number one, say um, this is a good comment, so leave it, or this is a bad one, delete it, or, or we can set it up so that it'll automatically do it for us. We have some control, so it's a good time here. Let's take a break, and when we come back, I'll, I'll show us how to do that. So we'll just do 10 minutes. We'll be back at 6.30, and we'll talk about comments.